<laughs> Welcome back to the Theme Park Wizard. I'm here with the one part of the OG55 crew, the Tech Wizard, the Vash Guy. Hello! Hey, 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 happy to be here, happy to be here. Let's go ahead, let's do it. Let's do it. Hmm. It gets you so hyped, now, doesn't it? It it it's a uh, it. it's a very interesting thing in the thing in the uh, in the theme park world for all theme parks, not just Disney, but uh, mm -hmm. Universal as we just played and Six Flags as we'll talk about today. Oh yes, yeah. Six Flags, my goodness, I am that's crazy because I actually liked this dude, and I'm gonna start off the story of how I liked this dude. It's because when he came in, when the other guy left, um, and this guy. Salim Bussel, I think. <laughs> um, he said he, he wanted to focus on improving the guest satisfaction. So, like, and you know, he was doing that, or sorry, I say it was as if he was stopped, but he kind of still is. Um, you know, he built a nice new bathroom and six flat a magic mountain, and he added some theming in places that it was kind of barren before. So, it's like, oh, this is great, but my goodness, look at this behind the scenes, it's all trouble. and my buddy Vash over here, because I can't see it, is going to read this open letter. Write a post it on Reddit. Um, and this is not the first instance of craziness, but this is like a really detailed thing of what this particular employee and all of their friends were going through across the whole chain. Insane. So let's give it over to Mr. Vash. Let's go ahead, because I think this... Uh... You know, for the viewers at uh, at home here, I think it's a it, it really sums up. It's a good summation of uh, not just the history of what happened here, but of how certain people in the company feel uh, with 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 what's going on there. So this was posted on Reddit here at the uh, uh, the uh, Six Flags subreddit, and uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Step down, Salim. Uh, an open letter to the Six Flags board of directors and investors. The sentiments shared in this letter are shared by most, if not all, of the Six Flags team members and many of our guests. You ousted Mike Spanos and named Salim Basul CEO of our company in November of 2021, after we had a great year. Salim addressed all of us in a virtual town hall shortly after and told us uh, why he felt the change was necessary. He stated that spending was out of control. We know he didn't take the time to learn why and where the money was being spent. He complained about a 300-plus page report that was submitted in to the board and told us that he doesn't read reports. <laughs> Did any of you read the report? I don't know. While we don't know specifically what was in the report, we can tell you uh, where the money was being spent. It was being spent on rehab and repair for our inter infrastructure, and that has been neglected by for so, so, so many years. Uh, would any of you allow your homes to fall into such disrepair? I doubt it. Salim had a lot to say uh, in a later virtual town hall with all of the parks. He made some good points, which all of us agreed with. But much of what he went on about was absolutely ridiculous and laughable. He would have heard everyone uh, at every park laughing at him had the parks not been muted. We went on at length about guests wanting to. He went on at length about guests wanting two ply toilet paper. Apparently, he spent a great deal of time complaining about guests dumping ice cream from their cups in the bushes. He ran with a lot about uh, wanting various things that aren't going to generate revenue, but only decrease it. Uh, you can see, folks, that uh, it's not going not going very well at all. Uh, there was plenty to like about the ideas and thoughts Salim shared with us, including his past successes as a business person who uh, uh, who wouldn't like the bonus program. He implemented at a previous company that increased uh, the bonus potential for every employee every year until the bonuses reached 10000 oh, All of us could certainly get on board with that, but there's only one problem. We'll never achieve the goals necessary to qualify for those bonuses due to Salim's leadership or lack thereof. Salim made it clear that he uh, realizes... Uh, he has a lot to learn and would rely on those of us who have a lot of experience in the business to teach him. But he's only done the opposite. He eliminated layers of team members, including Bonnie Weber, uh, who is one of the best in the business and now has all of the park presidents reporting directly to him. It didn't take long for the park presidents to realize that they're better off not offering ideas or thoughts to him. Why? He fires them. Yet uh, he can't seem to understand why nobody offers suggestions anymore. Uh, again, uh, inexperience, uh, maybe cutting of bureaucracy, which could be good, but 
apparently uh, uh, he doesn't have much experience himself, so that could get you into real trouble. We had a great 2021 season, yet Salim felt it necessary to freeze wages in 2022 after we went on for two years without wage increases due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, nobody uh, complained about the two-year freeze because it was understandable. It was not; ex It's not acceptable, however, to freeze wages after we had a great return and then expect everyone to rely on general bonuses every year. While a large... While large bonuses every year would be great, our next CEO uh, might not like that method of compensation and eliminate it. Will our salaries be adjusted to the point, or will our uh, compensation remain several years behind? We all know the answer to that. Thankfully, he backed down and gave most hourly employees a 75 cent hourly increase uh, after quite a bit of pushback. He still left salaried employees without. Morale is at an all-time low at Six Flags. We've lost a lot of great people to reductions in workforce and other great skilled team members are preparing to leave because they aren't happy working for Six Flags anymore and they can't afford to continue working for Six Flags uh, at this time. They have uh, families to support, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do so given the current state of the economy, which uh, we're seeing across all industries, not just uh, Six Flags. Mm -hmm. The performance of Six Flags will continue to plummet, as will the stock price. Um, as we continue to lose such skilled, experienced labor, we can't hire enough to run all of our attractions and retail locations. It's become increasingly difficult to hire skilled labor to maintain our infrastructure and rides. We're just hiring bodies at this point to fill positions, and that's not good. A high percentage of the people we're hiring aren't able to perform well, and we don't have a choice. It's severely impacting the services that we offer to guests. Again, not something that was that's just uh, limited to Six Flags. It's something that's going on in the industry right now, and mm -hmm. something to keep in mind. Uh, what is the number one thing for people coming to Six Flags for? Well, they come for our rides, in case you didn't know. We can't hire enough people to run all of our rides, let alone maintain and inspect them. We're losing valuable label labor there as well. Uh, more are preparing to leave. Some of the people inspecting the rides are, are certainly trained and qualified, but don't necessarily have enough experience to adequately perform a thorough inspection. That's scary. Safety is going to suffer, and there's nothing worse for an amusement park than an accident. We hope it doesn't happen, but it probably will. That is very profound. Very interesting right there. As we all know from Disney, uh, during the Paul Presser and Cynthia Harris years, that was quite a bit of concern. Salim mm -hmm. so Exclaim expressed that he wants uh, Six Flags to be considered a premium product like Disney and Universal. That simply isn't going to happen under Slim's leadership. We're charging our guests more and offering far less. Apparently that is correct with some of its new membership programs and so forth. Our attendance has been abysmal and many of our guests won't be returning. The proof is on social media. People aren't happy with the product and service that we're offering and our attendance proves it. Cedar Fair is doing quite well this year, so you can't blame the economy. Salim released a rather dumb video of him saying, quote, have no fear numerous times throughout. Unfortunately, we have plenty of fear as long as he remains in charge. He wants us to do more with less, as he has said in the virtual town hall. He also expects guests to pay more and get less. We all want Six Flags to succeed, but it won't while Salim is uh, CEO unless he changes his ways. Salim is a laughingstock of the entire company. None of us have an ounce of respect for him. Uh, but we certainly fear him. He reminds us a lot of Mark Shapiro in both uh, his energetic style and of speaking and leadership style. It makes us wonder if we're heading down the same road. It's up to you, the board, to fix this. There will be consequences if you fail to do so. A little, um, a little threatening there. Our stock price is only forty percent lower than it was a year ago. Stay on the course, and the goal, if the goal is to keep us into drive us into the ground, investors, we ask you to hold the board accountable, demand change in leadership, cut your losses. Uh, you pretty much get the rest there. Um, oh boy, that was a that was a that was very somber. <laughs> it was, it was, and look, listen, uh, that's by the way on pretty much the eve of the quarter two earnings report, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, which then, was just posted. And uh, it wasn't good. Uh, was not good at all. Um, it <laughs> not, net not income fell. Like the attendance. Dropped what? What did you say? Like 30%? Attendance dropped 21.2 percent to 6.7 million. Like a lot. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And by the way, the, the expectation for uh, for that quarter was 8.2 million. So <laughs> they had, <laughs> I mean, they, they had they hadn't even uh, reached expectations, and and and, uh, and actually, uh, it, it 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 fell off there. Um, the uh, the uh, net income fell to forty five point four million from seventy point five million. 
uh, uh, earnings per share um, uh, was uh, one dollar and one cent. Let me just see here. Yes, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, so. Yeah, that uh, revenue surprisingly fell by five point three percent to four hundred thirty-five four point uh, thirty four hundred thirty-five point four million dollars. Uh, f- uh, um, from uh, four hundred and fifty-nine point million. I, it's just um, when you see those numbers, it, it is it is terrible. I mean, it is really really bad. Uh, it, this. As opposed to Disney, who is uh, you know increasing uh, attendance, they're increasing per cap mm-hmm. uh, spending uh, consistently yeah, across the resorts. Beat expectations. Beat expectations at pretty much every single level here. Mm-hmm. Um, it is definitely a tale of two theme park proprietors, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the Salim character. Uh, uh, I mean, what do you think, uh, Wizard? I, I mean, I don't yeah, think this well, guy has the chops. Not at all. I mean, like I said before, when he first came on, he he said good and he's he said and was trying to do at least for Magic Mountain. It's only because obviously my closest part, so he can only go from there based on what I see. I was starting to do good things there, like not putting up, like care about other stuff besides rides, which was great. But then you know, ooh, hearing this, you no know, spe- specifically that safety thing, you know. Six Flags, especially Magic Mountain, you know, someone, uh, they let a tree branch go on Ninja and someone uh, derailed. And um, Six Flags has had a fair share of accidents in the past, so they really can't, Magic Mountain especially, can't afford another one uh, because people already are kind of like, eh, eh, on some of the rides. I mean, my friend, uh, my best friend actually went to, she loves Six Flags, it's her favorite park. But the last time she sure. went, it was this summer, she said, eh, I'm not sure if I like Six Flags more because when I was on X2, I was, the restraint was not closing and I was starting to slip out. I was like, oh, that's scary. <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that, like, that's scary. You know, what do you don't want to be like, ooh, am I going to go to Six Flags and, you know, not come out of Six Flags or come out with a severe injury because they sure. don't want to, they don't have enough people to do a maintenance check? Like, that's scary to me. Safety is the number one concern out of the number one there and even with all the other stuff so that's i feel like they should really address that i do agree i mean look we've seen this have catastrophic consequences in the past again like i said the cynthia harrison paul pressler era of uh the mm-hmm. disney company actually was mm-hmm. uh, was a particularly tough one uh two uh incidents seemingly back to back uh one with uh, big thunder which ended in tragedy mm-hmm. unfortunately and uh, copious amounts of injury, and also the uh, um, the Columbia incident uh, on 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 the shores there uh, with the with the cleat. Uh, again, it, these things. I mean, you know, when somebody uh, is next to a ride vehicle or on a ride vehicle, you're pretty much pretty much have the the, the guests and in, in, you know their lives in your hands, mm-hmm. and to uh, uh, to to to. to um, uh, to, to disregard that uh, uh, by uh, by by short shifting ma- maintenance and so forth, it, it's particularly scary and particularly dangerous. Um, uh, and uh, your your theme park reputation, I, I believe, you know, it, it relies on guests feeling safe. And if that's ever mm-hmm. put into question, it could be the death nail. Honestly, um, hopefully it doesn't get to that, but. Uh, apparently this uh, open letter to the board uh, 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 I, I mean they, they have a little bit more of a, of a, of a dire outlook um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so but uh, uh, look and, and we should get into it uh, wizard but but uh, let, me, let me go ahead and and, uh, and set the stage even further apparently um, uh, it, it's it's been tough uh, um Let's see here. Uh, you know, within a month of him actually coming on, he eliminates the VP position, and the idea is we're going to have everybody report directly to me, which uh, is fine, right? If you know what you're doing, yeah, but apparently exactly. he does not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's get, Let's get rid of a knowledgeable person who's probably been here for a few years, and uh, you know, let me try to do it all by myself because I just you know, have all the pride. I don't know, I'm crazy. 
it, it's wild. And uh, now it didn't just end there either. Apparently, there's been a slew of of uh, you know middle and upper management positions actually mm-hmm. removed. Most notably, however, is about what is it now seven park presidents uh, who have either yeah. retired, died, or been fired. Um, Which, Six Flags that was exactly with that open letter when they, I guess, the place at the park presidents they offer them their ideas and all of a sudden they get fired. So we can only assume those seven may have tried to offer up some probably good advice. Right, right. You have uh, Six Flags New England, Six Flags Great Adventure, Six Flags America, Six Flags St. Louis, Six Flags Georgia, Six Flags Texas, and uh, I believe this the uh, the president for Six Flags Chicago actually passed away as as uh, as I said. So you now have seven park presidents who are gone within what? I mean, the guy's only been there for, since November. That is a huge yeah. amount of executive turnover, by the way. That like, is not what you want. Yeah. That's like like what ten months, nine nine months, nine ten months. Oh, it is absolutely wild. Now, again, uh, look, I, sometimes uh, changing out of the guard is necessary in order to implement uh, new changes. And I don't think anybody's question, qu- questioning that. But when you have that, when you have that much uh, attrition uh, at that level, um, it, it's not only difficult to implement new changes, uh, but it, but it can also kind of uh, you know spiral these parks into into somewhat chaos <laughs> because uh, you have people like you said, uh, Wizard. You have people who have uh, spent decades in this industry uh, now gone. You have a lot of talent mm-hmm. that's gone. You have a lot of people who know the business uh, uh, very intimately. Uh, now removed from those positions, those key positions. Uh, again, not good. Almost like a kind of sign up what Mr. David Zaslov is doing over at uh, Warner Brothers, HBO Max over there. The same type of history repeating itself just nine months later. That is true. That is true. Now, in the case of Zaslov, at least that guy is. Uh, at least he knows, uh, yeah, he's been in the industry, yeah, so he knows something. Uh, hey, he knows a little bit, right? He knows a little bit about yeah. uh, specifically linear uh, television distribution, right? I mm-hmm. believe that's his kind of forte, and he's kind of applying uh, some of those uh, lessons or, or some of those uh, uh, that, that recipe for success that he's had in order uh, mm-hmm. uh, to the studio side. We'll see if that actually pays off. Again, I think their strategy is sound, but uh, again, I mean, you have uh, you know these industry leaders with egos and so forth. We'll see if he can navigate those waters. Uh, but when it comes to the theme park space, I mean, I'm going to bring him up later on with an idea I've had for so long. I'm sure others have. I think I've mentioned it on Orange Grove's channel. But oh, it's so simple. Uh, I oh my god. But I'll bring it up later. But yeah. Oh, so uh, now I'm hoping with new leadership. Maybe he does it. Maybe he won't. But, oh, it's so simple. I feel like you know exactly what I'm going to say. Because, uh, goodness, if you look at those DC lands at uh, Six Flags Parks, they're uh, not what a DC, DC land should be. <laughs> but, you know, look, so, so what's the name? Celine? Yes. I guess he came on and he said some good stuff. I was like, my goodness. Like, it's a great, I feel like, you know, it's a great thing you'd want to have your parks aspire to Disney or Universal, even though they may not get there. But that's a good thing to look forward to, to try to make, I have read that as, you know, adding theming, adding shade, just little the little things that will make it like, even if you aspire to Knott's Bay Farm, that's a good thing to aspire to. But you got to yeah. do it right. You know, you can't just eliminate everybody. You can't call your guests low-income Walmart people on food stamps. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can think it. <laughs> Say it on her. <laughs> Say it. Uh, well, yes, and, and I wanted to go ahead and get to those comments uh, uh, precisely <laughs> yeah. uh, because uh, because I think it's very interesting. Uh, uh, you sent me this, and I thought I thought it was worth reading to our viewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, in internal calls, Salim has said that the clientele of the parks needed to change. Okay, interesting mm-hmm. uh, trend in the industry, right? You're, I think you're looking towards. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, bigger spenders, uh, yeah, higher guest uh, spending, and you know, yeah. lower attendance, but higher offset by higher guests, like Disney with the it, reservation it, system, and you know, exactly, exactly. Now with Disney, they called it an unfavorable guest mix. Yeah. Now, <laughs> uh, as you astutely pointed out, Slim has its his own version of that, yeah. and, but he didn't characterize it quite as diplomatically. Uh, he compared Six Flags to Walmart with the goal to become Target. 
Okay. He said that in order to be successful, we need to eliminate, quote, lower class guests from entering the park to improve the overall uh, experience better for those who actually spend more money. Uh, in one call, he alluded to the dining pass, quote, abusers shouldn't use the plans as an add-on to their food stamps uh, they are already likely receiving. Uh, that is... Um, that is uh, that 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 that, that <laughs> is a, a little bit too much there. It's a I little bit. Things, some people say, I mean, that's like, damn, that's like that's pretty fucked up, as the orange girl would say. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I do, I do agree with you, wizard. That that is uh, uh, like even the uh, other remarkable. stuff was like kind of like, man, eh, that's not good. But come on. Uh, food stamps are likely likely already getting he's like not even like that maybe they're likely getting them like damn that's a loss like the lowest of lows you can even say like if i had an annual if i had a membership and i was i qualify i had food stamps i'd cancel that thing right away i'm like what do you say about me that's mm -mm, no way no way right Right, and and I, I I I don't disagree with you. I mean, I, I think a lot of people were uh, were 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 highly offended at those comments. <laughs> and, and look, rightfully so. I mean, geez, you know, you're you're basically disparaging your your you know your your guests or at least uh, large swaths and portions of them. I, I, it's just uh, it's it's. It's a little bit unconscionable, honestly. <laughs> um, now, look, listen, I, I, I can understand that uh, you'd want a, 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 um, a you know higher per cap spending. One of the ways you actually achieve that goal is to actually uh, prioritize higher spending guests, right? But uh, let's be honest here. I mean, and, and OG pointed this out uh, particularly well when I was relaying this kind of stuff to him. He was like, look, they, they just don't offer the quality product that's going to necessarily get, you know, whales in there, <laughs> essentially, right? I mean, you know, I, 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 would, you, would you agree with that sentiment? I, I think I would, but... No, yeah, because uh, this is also what I've been saying. I'm like, all right, you have 20 coasters. That's world record. Good job. That's fantastic. But and this is what I try to explain to my my friends and say, why do people like Disney? Why do people like this? And I'm like, look, uh, I tell them, you know, Six Flags is terrible in some aspects. It's because look, me, my stomach, but I, my family has a sensitive stomachs. And more than loop, and I'll get motion sickness. I'm credit coasters, enough for me. It has one, we're good. Most of the six guys I can't even really get on unless I really take John Manson because I'll end up like sick. So I go there, I don't really ride much, but I just go and walk, walk around and you know, film. And then, but so automatically, of mostly coasters, it like just like the people he's trying to eliminate, he's trying to he eliminates other people, children, families. Older senior, I mean, there's a lot more senior citizens, older people that Universal and Disney parks is that a more variety of things to go on, right? So if you build family dark rides, you can have 20, you don't have to demolish a coaster to do it. 262 acres, you have plenty of space to do that, and lots of abandoned areas. Add some, just doesn't have to be Disney level theming or Universal. You know, be like nuts. Nice little mix. You know, add some theme, little dark ride, something like just I thought, I thought Justice League was a great thing, you know. May have some long pre shows, but still a great something everyone can go on, you know, like everyone. Then you track the families. The families is what four tickets versus maybe two. Usually, Magic Mountain. When I go, I just see you know, I see families, but I see like mostly you know, couples or teenagers or you know people. And that's something, couples, young couples and teenagers, they're probably not going to go buy some merchandise, right? Because they're broke. I know, I'm young. We're all broke. It's expensive out here. But if you get a family of four, there's probably a little kid saying, I want that Batman shirt. I got to have it. How can I have it? And they go and buy, they start selling more merchandise. But if you just, you have to cater to the family and high thrill crowd. You do everything, get more of those families in. They want to come back. And then you spend you automatically you can increase guest spending because not just by raising prices but just these more people will be in the park by buying tickets and buying merchandise so you don't have to really don't have to raise a price i think because you would have for more experiences different clientele will come in as well as the coaster people because you still have 20 coasters and then then we get more people so then me you may have some 
Walmart people. Then you may have some Louis Vuitton people, or you may have some H&M people. Uh, I like how he compares it to stores. But yeah, you know, you get everybody. Like Disney, you get everybody. I'm sure there's Walmart people in Disneyland. There's eight Louis Vuitton people at Disney, but they have experience for this for everybody. You have California Avenger for the thrilling stuff, Disneyland for the calmer stuff, and classic stuff. Universal's mix of coasters and dark rides, and obviously high theming, but you still don't need uh, baby steps. Six Flags first offer some for everyone. Everyone's asked, even on the, the thrilling people. I look at the forums, like, all right, cool, twenty coasters, but when's our flat ride package coming? What are you gonna put? What are you gonna put a parking garage or shade in the parking lot? What are you gonna add some, you know, shade in general? Just little. The even the coaster people want the little things. So if they, if they do that, spend their money on that. Um, that would be great, but even you said there's something about them, they want to have like no investment when that's not the way to do it. No, um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's uh, to 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 put a little bit more meat on those bones, wizard. Uh, uh, apparently, Salim uh said, I believe, what was it? Was it May or February? Let me go ahead and get the date for you guys. Um, Yes. He said, uh, yeah, in May, uh, he eliminated the dining pass, but additionally stating that uh, they had enough rides and attractions at the domestic parks and did not need to invest into those parks every uh, in the future, year over year, which was uh, quite stunning to me. Obviously, the theme park business <laughs> is somewhat predicated, especially the amusement business as they are mm -hmm. in, is predicated on, uh, you know, a return of investment. Yeah, it's 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 predicated on um, you know annualized investment, capex, so forth, in order to get people to come back because uh, 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 re, you know returning uh, guests, client base is is vital to their industry. And yet, Salim is saying, no, 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 we don't need it. We have enough attractions. We can, we can go ahead and monetize these. It's like okay, well, that's uh, that's quite the thing. Now I understand that. Um, uh, uh, Six Flags has had issues regarding, uh, you know, cash flow, bankruptcy, debt, and all those kind of things, because they've have changed hands uh, multiple times, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I can understand the the the. the the um, necessity to go ahead and eliminate some of that debt and eliminate some of those so some of those problems that they've accrued over the years. But uh, again, do you cut out spending and investment entirely? I don't know if that's a good strategy. Mm -mm. I, you know, again, especially when attendance is already dropping, if you don't have anything new and you don't do anything, then I feel like we'll continue to drop because, you know, I keep saying that again, they start, they need a CEO from maybe uh, someone who's not retired, but has older and has worked at Disney and Universal and just come in there and just Disney Universal Five, the place. You know, just, just the little things. You know, the simplest things. I'm telling you. Oh, I would. Like, come on. The parking lot. You, there's potholes in the parking lot. You know, people don't notice these things when they go to Disney or Universal because there's no simple. Just go ahead and go. But you go to Six Flags and then you go to one of those places and you start noticing little things. Like even and not just theme park people like us. I hear people around, like, where's the fast pass? Or, oh, look, they have the lightning lane here. Because they, you know, Six Flags started doing the, the individual lightning lane that they call Flash Pass. Plus, you can just pay $5 to get on Twisted Colossus and not pay 80 bucks for the thing. You know, people say that. So they, they know what's going on, and they can tell when something's, like, better or what. So when there's, if there's a potholes in the parking garage lot, that's that's your first point of entry. That I mean, you, you gotta dress to impress, you know. You got first impressions are key. You can't be bouncing around like, oh gosh, what the heck? And then there's no shade. Just this, if you're there at 105 degrees, if you're gonna open a new ride like Wonder Woman, I was, you know, I went to the media day and no shade. I understand the land wasn't finished. Got it. Totally cool. You want to open the ride? It's done. But the gift shop wasn't even finished. The bathrooms that they demolished. Hadn't even begun construction yet. They're supposed to replace the new ones. They took out a flat ride. So all that area that provided kind of shade, beaming sun. It was 102 degrees. They were standing there, standing there. They had a batch of umbrellas, right? They're open, but they're way far away. The media event was like over here. Everyone's standing over here. And the umbrellas that were all together were over there. They could have easily moved them to provide a little shade. They didn't. 
I left them over there. I was like, fine, okay. But at least, you know, when it opens up on Saturdays, the two hour lines, you want, you know, maybe put some umbrellas there. Nope. Pictures of all people saying two hours, of 100, it was 108 that Saturday. Two hours for the Wonder and uh, Twist, uh, so many names, Wonder Woman. And then, you know, they're just standing there. No gift shops not open. Nothing's open. There's no bathroom. I mean, how are you going to do that? How are you going to? I get it. The ride's open, but come on. They built the other bands in the front of the park in just a, uh, a few months. You could have, like, they just didn't even start construction of the bathrooms. It was sitting. They demolished the flash and that was a long time ago, early on in the process, before the first even support was up. They, I don't know why they didn't open the land and the coaster with a new set of bathrooms for people. Also, those bathrooms come with a water station refiller so they can refill the water. I I didn't even have the gift shop open. The land's moneymaker wasn't even open. You know, I think Wonder Woman, I, they said summer 2022, so they got to stick. They wanted to stick to it. I think it opened a bit too early, at least a month too early, because the gift shop, I still think, is not even open. It's much, almost done. But, you know, it just can't do that. First impressions. First impressions. Terrible. Someone's going to, I mean, I saw a lot of complaining on things, especially when, for the coaster people, they're like, oh, it's the best over. And a lot of them, like, man, I waited two hours and eh, it was just okay. And I went home. I'm like, ooh, ooh. So you waited two hours and didn't even like the thing. Or maybe they would have liked it, but maybe they're just suffering in the two hour heat that by the time we got to the ride, they're just so heat, ex suffering from heat exhaustion. You know, it's just terrible. That's not the way you do things. I know that even Disney kind of with the same problem with the phases. You know, you just got to make sure it's ready. First impression, because, you know, some people, like in Galaxy's Edge, they might never want to come back. Let's say, like, why isn't that run open? No, well, why? I'm not going to pay $5,000 to fly back here. This thing's not even done yet. Then they did the same thing with Avengers Campus. Where's the other thing? Oh, it's not there. You, know, you gotta, you gotta. First impressions are key to, especially the general public, because you know we're gonna go away all the time, right? Someone are not. It's expensive. These things are, especially flying out of state. It's expensive. So whenever there's Six Flags, not whoever, you gotta do first impressions. Six Flags just does it the worst because they're already bad in the first place. And you know, I couldn't believe it. How are you gonna stand there in 108 degrees? You're going to let your people stand there at 108 degrees at the brand new ride. You're telling them to come visit, and you're not going to provide any water, at least hand out water, nothing. I was mind blown. I couldn't really say anything bad about it on the video because then I was like, yeah, they invited me. But even in the media event video, I still said, there's no, look, guys, there's no shade. And I pointed, just big, it looked like a desert. I think there's more shade in Vegas. I was flabbergasted, but not shocked at the same time. Still very mad. I kept talking about it the whole time. Well, you, you would have thought that, at least for a media event. Uh, you know, these are people who you're giving a first impression to, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you would have thought that they would have uh, maybe provided something there. I mean, I, I've seen big spreads, and I've been critical, actually, of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, these media, these, uh, these think prep proprietors putting on the big spread for media, but not necessarily doing that for guests. But mm -hmm. you would have thought they at least would have had, uh, you know, uh, a water and shade. I mean, that's the, uh, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. That's the bare minimum that you could do. I'm, I'm yeah. very surprised by that. Very surprised. Very, very um, discouraging it was, to, to, it was to hear. very sad because now at the media event, they did give us water and snacks. But I was, I couldn't believe it. I literally said, my buddy PJ from SoCal Pals was with me. I was like, look, the umbrellas are right here. I was like, they can just move those though, because the stage, even the poor park president was, had no shade. He was on the stage in the sun's and uh, barely in his face. I'm like, wow. And you see all the media, all, while we were waiting, all of them were under the tree. Every single person was under the tree. I was like, wow, it's like a whole little party over there. And I was like, damn, that's sad. Everyone has to stand under this tree or all the way over by Teen Titans, which is providing a little bit of shade in the queue. And there's no one, the whole center of the land, barren. I'm like, I, I was like, I hope it doesn't look like this on Saturday because <laughs> people are not going to be too happy. <laughs> oh, my goodness did. gracious. And uh, to give uh, our, our viewers even more perspective on the situation here, it's Valencia, California, on like the side yeah. of a mountain. It is Magic right. Mountain, right? It is uh, very hot, very oh. hot. It can get it can get brutal up there for sure. And mm -hmm. to not have, uh, I mean, it's it's. 
Look, I, I mean, when you hear about Salim and, and what he wants and what he's demanding and stuff like that, you can't help but think that this is, you know, this is tone setting by him really affecting how the parks are run, how these these mm -hmm. uh, theme parks operate. When I hear about no shade and and uh, no water, especially after that, uh, that, that, that open letter right there and some of his mm -hmm. comments that he's made uh, even publicly, it's like, hmm, well, I, I see where this is coming from, you know? It's, uh, it's a real shame. You know, he started out pretty encouraging, right? I, I believe... He did. Uh, like I said, I liked him. I, I, I liked his words and I liked his early actions of those I mean, like within a few, like by December, there was like some the river, as we say, Grizzly River run, or the Roaring Rapids, and that's another thing. Boy, this may not right. be his fault, but by the Roaring Rapids area, they added like some wagons and some, some like they didn't have to do that, but they did. It kind of looks like Frontierland. I was like, oh, that's nice, that's cool. But Roaring Rapids, again, probably not his fault. But wow, what a what a what a. People don't know that, so this is what an inopportune thing. Oregon Rapids has been closed all summer long, all summer long, sure. and yeah, Valencia gets like 105, you know, 105, 110. Oh, yes. Six Flags, Magic Mountain, again, coasters, fantastic. They're ripping out water rides, they're ripping out tidal waves to put in Wonder Woman, and they're ripping out log jammer to put in uh, full throttle. I particularly like the log jammer, so it's a little sad, but that's okay. So Roaring Rapids and Jet Stream, but Roaring Rapids, you know, and those grizzly river running, roaring those type of rap rides really can get you soaked. Sure. So that made us that ride's made by Intamin, and I think they're waiting on some parts. I think that's what's going on there. They've been waiting on these parts all summer, so they closed it in like spring, and it's still closed today, the hottest months of the year. You're, you're, you're down to two water rides, and now you're down to one ride ride jet stream because the, the one's closed for no apparent parts, but. I don't. I again, maybe not this fault. Their fault could be, you know, because there are shipping issues. But you know, it wasn't an opportune time. No, the guests don't know that. They're probably like, "Why is this thing closed? It's 105 degrees, and I can't get on the water ride. I came here just for this." You know, and Magic Mountain's big, so it's kind of a long walk and up a hill to get to Roaring Rapids if you're at Wonder Woman or vice versa. So if you did a long walk in the heat, hoping the and the app is not good either, then Never you when something's closed, it won't tell you when the wait times are off. So, oh, jeez. But I mean, I just I couldn't believe I'm like, oh, this is terrible. The roaring, and I see people complain online about it. I'm like, you know, rightfully so. I can't believe the roaring rapids is closed. I don't know. They should have gotten the part in the winter time. I'm sure there was an it. And they, uh, I feel like it could have been better planned. But that was just another thing to add on to Magic Mountains. Poor woes. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Well, yes, and uh, look, uh, in that, uh, look, uh, two things about the Roaring Rapids ride, right? First of all, it's intimate, so you know there's going to be some downtime. And <laughs> it's just kinda, that just kind of comes with the territory, right? But two, you know, I, we've seen this across the industry at uh, multiple levels. For example, I think the biggest example that I've, 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 I've seen recently is from Raider Springs Racers, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, uh, you know, I mean, those are pretty much... Uh, cars right there and they're mm -hmm. self-propelling and so you have uh, different you know you know engines engines that have to be serviced and so forth you have uh, a multitude of moving parts both above the track and under the track you have tires and so forth so it's a lot of parts and i believe uh, every single car has to be overhauled over like eighty thousand miles if i'm not mistaken and um and uh, apparently, I mean, you know, the the, the cast at Disney there, uh, they're really kind of sweating it because uh, you know they have parts that have uh, that they've you know had on back order for for months and months and months now, and they still haven't actually come in. So you'll actually see at Radio Springs Racers a little bit of inefficiency from actually taking cars off because well they have to you know uh, preserve the ones they have and mm -hmm. and get some extended life out of them, and the only way to do that is to not run at full capacity, and it's mm -hmm. it's really fortunate because we all know disney california venture they need all the capacity they can get yeah. so we have seen this uh in in uh, multiple theme park proprietors it's unfortunate that's actually taken an entire attraction down at six mm -hmm. flags especially in valencia california especially like you said the, the hottest you know months of the year and you don't have mm -hmm. your one of your two big water rides open it is uh 
I, 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 it's it's really unfortunate. It's quite uh, it's it's quite discouraging. But I want to go ahead and get to his comments, and I want you to 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 to, to hear these and and see what you have to say here. He said, "I am excited to bring the magic back to our parks." This was back in November 2020, mind you. Mm-hmm. I will do my best to enable our people to fulfill their passion to make a difference and to harness their creativity to build on a shared vision for guest satisfaction and financial growth. I am passionate about empowering employees and serving our customers, and together we can, with our team, I know we can set up Six Flags for a new level of success in the months and years ahead. A wizard, in your honest opinion, do you think he's fulfilled the, these promises? Do you think he's fulfilled his vision for the company? In uh, the first 30 days, yeah, but the second and the other ones, uh, oh, no, no. So doesn't look to happen. Uh, you know, I guess... I guess we maybe we'll find out officially, at least in the investment in the parts later on this year, next year. Because I guess fine, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman will count that as the last park president in the budget. So yeah, whatever the next thing is for this year, if there is anything, you know, because if there's any no investment, maybe there's nothing. But you know, you know, the one way you can prove that is at least on the park side is you know. You gotta fix the parking lot. You gotta fix the shade situation. You can, you can prove guest satisfaction just doing that, you know. And by yeah. fixing the parking lot, I mean a garage or putting solar. There's supposed to be. I mean, they gotta prove for it. this in Great America for solar. Solar, not Great America. The Discovery Kingdom for solar panels. A solar panel parking lot, which provides shade for your car, and obviously. The thing when I read the articles of it, I think 2018 it was approved, said it would provide energy for the whole park. So I don't understand why they do it. I, I mean, obviously it's expensive, but you would save money in the long run because your whole park sure. could be solar powered. So that, but that, that didn't affect him. That was four years ago. But he should bring that back, do that. And from the employees, oh, come on, give a raise. If you want one, you know, that incurs more people. And this, I guess, will go for everyone. Disney Universal, you know, obviously if you're struggling to hire people, the COVID and that Beyonce song have encouraged people to, you know, rethink how much money they should actually be getting paid. So if they're not coming, then raise the wage, if or whatever it is, or offer some per or offer some perks to offset the way. Do some to try to encourage some people to be back. But uh, first, you got to increase the employee morale because you know, no amount of money is gonna I wouldn't want to work there if, I, if employment or else sucked because no good, no good. Increase yeah, that. I mean, and then I, increase the money. Right, and I, you know, about uh, uh, cast member wages and so forth, team member wages, and in, in the case, I believe in uh, in uh, uh, six likes this case. Look, you know, my feeling about it is is. Um, uh, uh, you, you, you have to pay basically market rate for these positions. And sometimes, you mm-hmm. know, those positions are going to be, you know, quite low in regards to that. But uh, the market forces are obviously changing. You have rising mm-hmm. inflation. You have uh, severe economic factors, uh, both on a mic- macro and micro scale. Uh, if to, to echo Wizard's point, if you're having trouble people, you know, having trouble getting people in, I mean, you, you know, you can only do so much before you actually have to raise those rages. And I believe though that time is now. Uh, you know, considering uh, considering the, 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 I mean, let's be honest here. When it comes to Magic Mountain or any of these theme park proprietors in California, with California, you know, uh, the, the the cost of living is so high. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, you uh, some of these wages have to reflect that. Now, I I don't. My feeling is is look at you know the the wages that uh, cast gets is not necessarily uh, meant to uh, support a family of four or whatever you know it's yeah. meant to for that one position, uh, but at the same time I mean if you're having trouble getting people in there uh, again I mean it has this 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 uh, chicken has come home to roost so to speak you really have to do. You really have to, uh, you know, evaluate uh, uh, that, uh, that 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 pay structure and you know increase it if possible. Um, interesting yeah. thing too about uh, Salim, uh, you know, you, you talked about earlier about uh, about um, y- you know, I mean, the the kind of guest mix, right? Of uh, you know, mm-hmm. families, teens, uh, thrill seekers, and so forth, and how Universal and Disney, to their credit, actually have a good mix of those things, and mm-hmm. that's I think largely because of the offerings that they have there, right? They have mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, thrill oriented offerings. They also have uh, you know, well, their IP uh, is as well. 
IP, right? Uh, um, uh, what is it? The uh, high quality experiences, highly themed experiences. Uh, to your point, uh, <laughs> you know, Six Flags just simply doesn't have that. So their ability to delineate between those various consumer bases and demographics is very limited. Uh, I, look, I understand Salim wants to be, uh, you know, in the Universal and Disney theme park business. I mean, uh, even um, even Cedar Fair had those ambitions at, at, at certain points. But you, you got to realize, especially when it comes to like a, a park like Magic Mountain, for example, uh, your ability to do that is going to be limited. You have to, you know, accept the realities on the ground a certain point i guess recently he said uh he said in explaining the company's pivot away from the discounting model he said that the company's parks had become quote a cheap daycare center for teenagers during breaks and summers <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i mean it's like wow i mean that is that is quite remarkable to say these things and uh, uh look and listen know, i mean that yeah, comment, by the way he wishes that would be true because if the attendance is down 21%. If anyone's yeah. a cheap daycare center, it would be not, which is packed and actually has teenagers, and it is a daycare center. Um, yeah, really well, I mean, that's why they implemented their chaperone policy because that was yeah. happening to a greater degree than maybe they could handle. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so I feel like he wishes they were that. I mean, and not certainly packed, and this is down 21%. So he's not even. He's not even the insult he's giving out. <laughs> Again, he's coming from this kind of boisterous position when he doesn't necessarily have the goods to back it up, right? I mean, it's completely bizarre, dude. You're you're making yourself, like you said, wizard. You're making yourself uh, uh, look like a laughing stock, essentially. Uh, so it's it's um, <laughs> it's quite profound. It's quite. It is quite something to hear this guy talk and, and not necessarily. Uh, <laughs> Talk about know. no filter. My goodness. Yes, yes, exactly. Precisely. 100%. And look, to not his credit. Not a good businessman. Right, right. I, I mean, it, it, well, it is kind of, uh, sure. you know, looking that way. Look, at least um, Cedar Fair, right? They got Matt Wiemann, which uh, had been in the theme park business uh, for, for, for a long time. He had, you know, successfully ran uh, Disney's cruise, cruise line operation, really, uh, you know, increasing guest satisfaction on that level, having great success over there. He ran Disneyland for a number of years, especially leading up to the Disneyland's uh, 50th anniversary. And then when he left, he joined the Cedar, the Cedar Fair um, uh, team, and, and I believe he's running the, the entire uh, theme park operation for them now. And uh, I mean, honestly, by comparison, he's done a remarkable job with turning those parks around. And I understand, I, I believe Cedar Fair is closing one of their parks, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, it's America. Yeah, you know, and, and look, uh, these things happen, but I, I think, uh, you know, I, I believe even that step uh, was was maybe the right one, uh, considering... Yeah, uh, I, believe they, that I think with been. that, they would clear um, all their debt by just selling that park, and that's not like the... That's probably pretty landlocked anyway, and it's yeah. going to be pretty close, so it's, it's literally not much room for growth, I'd say, for that park. Even though it's a beautiful park, I'm going to say, but not much room like to grow or to do anything. Yeah, so uh, you know there are some business reasons in order, you know, that 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 are, uh, um, in this, you know, that are pushing that change there, and and I think that's uh, that's you know, I, I we'll we'll see if it pans out. I believe it will, but. Look, I mean, Cedar Fair, in comparison to Six Flags, I mean, it, it, I, I, I got to get credit to the Matt Wee It's They did a remarkable job in, in, in how they've run that theme park operation, especially at Knott's and stuff. I, I, I know Knott's has had Knott's some is some issues. Ooh, yeah. Knott's, yeah, Knott's may have had some, some night issue, but I will never stop praising that thing for the amount of right. entertainment they have. Like, wow. Oh, my gosh. Like, Incredible phenomenal. entertainment like Disney, and it's just so much smaller. And I, yeah. before the Taste of May Farm, something they champ or Taste of Calico, whichever one started first, something sure. by the way, they champion first theme park in California to have that idea. Then, of course, you see people copying it. Good idea. Yep. Um, and allowed me, I'm sure a lot of other people before that, I haven't been in knots in like at least since like 2008 or something, like really long oh, time. Oh, wow. So I was like, but I was like, you know, hey, it's twenty five bucks. It's free parking. That sounds like a good deal. Nothing else to do, and let's do it. I've been to knots, and I was like, wow, this place is great. Then I tasted their food. And I was like, oh, this food's so good. So then I went to Boysenberry. Then I went to Mary Farm, 
and went to like all of them. And when Hang Time, as the first time seeing Hang Time, so when Hang Time had that lighting package and they put on like a little free show with the Christmas show, I was like, that's so cool. And then I went to this Not Scary Farm, best Halloween event I've ever been to. And then now oh. I just fallen in love with Nods. I love that thing. I put it such on a higher level than Six Flags. It's just great. I mean, and then, and then the ghost town, the Caligo, there's even those food event, but they still had a magic show. They were eating in this random magician from the town came up and was just doing magic and the mayor popped up. I'm like, this is nice. I like this. And they had the log ride. They had the water going on the log ride, even though it's wasting, not wasting, but spending money to turn that thing on. They didn't have to do that, but to make it look pretty, they did. It was great. I was like, this is this is what I'm talking about right here. I I do I do really appreciate and love the Knots operation, and they've inculcated so much goodwill because of it. You know, I mean, it's yeah. I, I I liken it to hey, that's what Disney used to be back in the day, <laughs> right? I mean, it's you know, it's like we weren't necessarily penny pinching to such an extent. Hey, we'll have some things uh, go on. We'll provide some entertainment. We'll provide uh, reasons for for you know uh, guests like you, Wizard, or, or guests like me to really fall in love with the park, which we have, right? Yeah. I mean, it really has. <laughs> Um, it, uh, it, it's 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 captured our hearts. Let's just say by its charming nature, and I think that's really really great. Like you said, you know the the taste of calico during the shutdowns uh, of of twenty twenty and beyond. There, uh, it, like you know, they were one of the first theme park proprietors to do that, be, uh, and uh, to to great success, and it inculcated a goodwill with that local populace. So when those parks actually did open, and when Disney restricted to the extent that they did, they really were set up to capture that local market. And, uh, and and do so phenomenally well. Uh, it's it's unfortunate what's befallen them in, in very recent times, but I think they'll get over it because uh, I mean, you know they, they know then, how to run a theme park operation. Exactly. Even then, they responded like very quick. Was it like three or four days? Chaperone policy. And I heard at least from the theme park casual, Mister Casual, he said, and many people online seemed well received. They expanded it. He said, he said we went there before and after the um, policy was. Uh, and few or uh, started to before it was okay, but you know, it was just kind of chaotic and loud. Teenagers are loud, and afterwards, it's like so much more pleasant. And he so it, it seems well, well received. So they, they found a quick action, which is fantastic. They said, Uh, uh-uh, we're not wasting any time, we're gonna do this. I don't care what people say, and people like it. And so, yeah. you know, I think they didn't lose any goodwill with people because they're probably, oh, stupid teenagers from TikTok, you know. <laughs> But and they're probably they probably gained even more goodwill, saying, "Wow, look how fast Knotts did something about this." That they are not yeah. playing around, here, especially before a Scary Farm comes in, um, which hopefully they have the prop policy throughout them every night throughout the event, because that sure. can be very rowdy if there's no teenagers, if there's just teenagers about them. And the people who are upset with that, as I said in the podcast last episode, you know, if you're of some parent dropping off your kid for 10 hours at the theme park. It's not your local mall. So no right. be upset, okay? It's the theme park. Not It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm off the park all day, the playground all day, so you can just run around and mess around and line cut and do whatever the heck. It's a theme park. It's a place for families. It's not It's not the YMCA. You're not your after school <laughs> program. Go yes. to YMCA for that. <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, Salim's comments uh, in terms of daycare. It, like, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, look, I, I think there's um, I, I, I uh, I'll, I'll empathize with that comment. Let's say on, on, on a little bit, right? He could have maybe worded it a little bit better as the CEO of that position, mm-hmm. but uh, <laughs> I think his sentiments are at least sound, right? I, mm-hmm. I don't think people uh, want to necessarily. Um, uh, you know, a mix in with a crowd that maybe is there just to, you know, uh, be, be taken care of while, uh, you know, mom and dad are there. Like I said, there are a lot of teenagers there unsupervised. So I, get, right. I understand what he's saying, but bad execution of the wording. <laughs> Uh, which seems to be, uh, which seems to be uh, a par for yeah. course. Yeah, exactly. It's, it seems to be a, seems to be a trend. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it's quite fascinating, and and uh, you know apparently they've they've uh, you know eliminated some discounting. They've eliminated like the f- the f- the food pass apparently from mm-hmm. Six Flags. They've eliminated that as well, which uh, has a lot of people up in arms, right? Yeah, they eliminated that directly, and they uh, directly from that TikToker who the, the hack that they infused. Uh uh-uh, uh we uh uh-uh, we don't like this. Let's just take this out, and I guess 
Did they bring it back? Are they bringing it back? Did they bring it back in modified form? I'm not entirely sure myself, but I do know the um they came up with their new annual pass, Pokemon. It's funny. You realize they changed the term from season pass to annual pass. Interesting. Mm. Trying to be on that Disney and Universal level. Annual. They don't call them season passes. They call them annual passes and the existing memberships. Right. And the memberships, which I have, and I actually went back and checked just today because I'm like, wait a second, did they increase my price? But they didn't so far. But they started just increasing people's prices to the memberships, probably as a way for them to cancel, but mm. um, or to get more money, but or both. But mine's eight ninety five, and I, I get, I guess every twenty fifth, I get um, charged. But I didn't get, an, but I didn't get an email either. And some people were getting an email or not getting an email saying, "Guess what? We're increasing the price since by a um, lot." One person, I think the picture I sent you. Uh, said like four dollars. That's what eight? I don't let's say eight ninety five. Four dollars is twelve nine. That's like a massive increase per yeah. month. That really adds up. And to not get an awareness about it again, just it sounds like he wants people to just go away. <laughs> not come. yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like he's uh, wanting to push people away, which is weird yeah. because attendance is down now. Uh, I believe yeah, that so I guess he's her cap is up a little bit, but I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you've increased prices and, and, you know, you've done some inflationary measures in order to, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, increase spending in that way. Of course, spending is going to be a little bit up, but, but like you said, attendance down 21%. I mean, that is, that is not good. It, it's, it's very weird. Uh, Six Flags to me, doesn't seem to have a demand problem <laughs> uh you know, they, know they, right? well i mean in the same way that disney does i should say yeah, right exactly, uh, yeah well they have well they have too much demand it looks like they have they'll have enough demand yet they're mm. seemingly pushing people away from their bad service and from you know like you where they don't tell you in emails when they're gonna mm -hmm. you know increase prices and so forth it's just bad customer service yeah yeah and you know you think if you're gonna just look at everything by an acreage size right six flags 262 not like about 45 universal about 45 split in between two disney like combined like a hundred something right you think six times should have the most space right it's the biggest out of all of them so should it really have the most to be the most attended if it was built and correctly and operated correctly because all this space for all these people I think six flags only capacity one time that was in the summer or holidays of 2019 they actually had to shut the gates it was one day though and i was like wow that's the first time that ever happened but you think all this space and accommodate all these people, most times ago, the walkways are just sitting there empty. Well, not, yeah, basically empty. There's a couple people moving back there and forth. I'm like, wow. And I cannot stress it enough. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I, just from going to Disney and Universal, where they have a lot of shade and stuff, people are still going like that. So if you're at Six Flags, it's 105 degrees outside, or even... It can be 92. I've been there when it's 92 at Universal, 92 at Six Flags. Feels different because Universal has buildings and, again, part of the theme in the lands. I provide a little shade, not direct shade, but some, like, it's different. Six Flags, it feels like I'm just in the Mojave Desert, just going like this. Like, I just, I'm going to Joshua Tree and it's like, come on, burn me, son. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I can tell you, Hurricane Harbor was packed, right? So, but Six Flags is pretty barren on those hot days. And, and I, I sometimes I mentioned a com like mentioned a comment on the six flags annual pass holders page or whatever. And like, well, hey, you get what you pay for. Well, that's six flags. I'm like, do you guys not want? I don't care if you get what you pay, but you don't like do not want shade. Are you? You're like okay with it? I, I don't know. I don't understand how people can be okay with it. Like they're just like, oh, whatever, it's okay. And I'm like, what? Like this is maybe this is why you guys get CEOs like this because. Disney and Universal demand more. Disney maybe a little, people a little, a little too crazy at times. Like I mentioned, I think someone on Twitter got mad at me for that, but it's okay. I still stand by what I say. <laughs> you know, but you can demand more, but not be. But you should demand more of your company, the place that you love. You know, if you think they're sure. doing more, say something. You know, you can't just be like, yeah. oh, it's okay. So we should get what we pay for. Like what? No. Yeah, I mean there there is kind of a, I think. I think you're right, Wizard. I think uh, no matter what, how much you pay for, there's kind of a minimum threshold in terms of uh, mm -hmm. quality you can maybe expect from these places. And uh, and I, I do encourage guests to, to, to seek that out because it makes uh, for a better experience for us all. 
um, you just accepting the the status quo just because of how much you paid for it. I mean, come on, that's a little, you know, it's uh, don't don't don't, don't yeah, exactly. accept it's less. That's what they want. You're like, come on, they just yeah. increase all these prices, and you're like, yeah, it's okay, it's whatever. Yeah, that's what six packs is. I'm like, that don't want to be better, a premium product. Hello. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. Especially as Salim wants to uh, wants to get towards that premium product, right? It's like, I mean, uh, exactly. you know, I, I don't think you're necessarily going to do that when you're constantly, you know, increasing prices, offering less, doing all these kind of things, which, I, you know, sound uh, almost Disney, but you don't necessarily yeah, have the, the, the goodwill and demand. Yeah, key. yeah. The only way that works is the Magic Key program. You can, yeah. <laughs> you can charge more and offer less, and people are still buying because that's not right. 60, Apparently, 65 years of a uh, goodwill there. Exactly, hundred percent, and and those emotions and and everything that that sort of compels people to actually re-engage with the product the way they do. It's a it's a fascinating dynamic. You know, it's interesting. Um, the twenty one percent number that 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 mm-hmm. drop off in um in attendance. I have this kind of theory. I don't know about, about you, wizard, but uh, maybe this makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Please tell me if it doesn't. But um, my suspicion is that domestic tourism is dropping off. Right, mm-hmm. that uh, that we're kind of uh, getting past this kind of post uh, lockdown period where you had a lot of pent up demand, right? A lot of people want to get out of their houses and experience those things that they weren't able to, and that domestic tourism is dropping off as a result. Whereas international tour- tourism is actually you know going up. We we heard mm-hmm. on the earnings call with uh, Disney for their Q3 2022 uh, earnings report that um, that international uh, business is on the upswing, right? That it's mm-hmm. you know they haven't even reached the peak yet. It will go up. So we'll probably see those numbers that Walt Disney World especially be buoyed by international visitation, whereas Six Flags Magic Mountain or Six Flags Parks in general, maybe they'll, they're not really the international havens for that. And mm-hmm. maybe because of those things, we're seeing that reflected in their numbers uh, uh, for a- attendance because, well, one of their economic drivers that they have uh, to for, for when it comes to visitation is from those domestic tourists especially, mm-hmm. and maybe they're dropping off, uh, um, uh, and we're seeing that reflected in those results. Results. Do you think that makes sense, or do you think it's just Salim's undoing? You know, I think it's Salim's undoing. Like a portion of it could make sense, but again, you know, st- strong IP and and good theme parks really, I think, are the, the key draw. And I the, even domestic, if let's say domestic tourism is, is, is sliding, right? Every time we go to, you know, I went to when I was oh filming last Nintendo update, right? Sure. You're right about international tourism. I see a lot more international tours at Universal, and I know that they really bank on, especially the Asian tours. At least when I work there, there's like groups of 50 just come in, and they're, they're really starting to come back every time I come back. I'm like, oh, good, good, good. Keep it up. Yes. Now, domestic, at least at maybe Universal and Disney, I, I think it's still, it's still, it may not be rising, but still very there because I was in the security line and a group of Americans, I don't stay there from, but they're talking about how they're going back to their hotel later. And I keep hearing that throughout Universal, especially going back to their hotel later, going back from the plane. And they're not from the country, but just different states or different, maybe this state, but up north. But, you know, and I hear that Disney too, someone from Rise of the Resistance, they come from Colorado and they're like, oh, what's this ride about? I want to get on this ride. So at Disney, you know, I hear a lot of domestic people from different states, you know, still here, down here, and a lot of international. Six Flags, I rarely ever i mean i could probably count on my hands if i ever heard an international tourist over there like mm. at all interesting enough and but even even with domestic unless it's some coaster enthusiast that's like oh yeah i traveled from here to write this most of the people i hear i mean you can see are well, not, well, basically children or like oh yeah i live in north hollywood or LA, i live so i feel like even before now I haven't noticed any domestic, like, internet or travelers from different states going to Magic Mountain at all. Actually, now I think about it, wow, yeah, interesting. Yeah, really, and I have not noticed that at all. So I, I feel like it can't be dropping at six because I feel like it's really not that existent, interestingly enough. Uh, yeah. Wow, I never thought about that until you just brought that up. That's incredible. And, 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 the regional aspect of Six Flags. Right. Right. Uh, I guess you're right. I guess it is a much more uh, regional uh, kind of operation. And uh, yeah, you would think, though, with 20 coasters and such large, it should try to be like inter- or at least a domestic 
nation, like a destination park, you know, it's not like tiny, like, I feel like Knott's Bay Farm's more of a destination park than Six Flags, and that's, again, so much tinier, uh, crazy, if I had 262 acres of land, oh, I'd, be, I'd make it the best resort on the planet, it'd be crazy, Six Flags should have its hotel, Six Flags should, oh, there's so much, it's, it's so, that's why it's so frustrating going there, because I'm like, every time I go, I'm like, hmm, this should be changed, this should be changed, man, I do this, I do this, I do this, and you just get this, you know, and it's so yep. sad because you're like potential, potential. The largest of the six packs parks, potential, potential, squandered, sad, terrible. It really is. Uh, it really is unfortunate. Um... Uh, I, I know Six Flags has had struggles over the years. Like I said, it's it's uh, changed hands quite a bit uh, between various centers and point, so forth. It was facing demolition. You remember that? Yeah. With the yeah. homes that are built being built behind it now. Uh, could have been built in its place, which would have been very sad because that would have been an iconic park lost. So, but I, you know, with Salim, if he continues his little path, who knows? Will Six Flags be sold again? Hopefully to another theme park company, not because I'd hate to see it torn down for some commercial or housing development. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, and look, listen, as far as closed down, I mean, it's not out of the realm of uh, a possibility. I believe uh, mm -hmm. Six Flags Worlds of Adventure, right? This kind mm -hmm. of massive seven, 700 plus acre theme park that was there in uh, Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, that shut down, right? It was just a little bit too yeah. big for its own, its, of its own undoing. We have heard movement in the amusement industry, right? I believe yeah. SeaWorld made a bid to buy uh, Cedar Fair, right? At, at yeah, one point, I Cedar Fair declined. That. All right, and that was just, that was very recent. So maybe you know, to your point about another theme park proprietor being you know uh, 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 bought out, uh, uh, buying them out, maybe something like a sick, maybe something like a Sea World kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. There is uh, there is some possibility there, especially if the stock price keeps uh, keeps dropping. I believe you yeah. shared a, a funny tweet where you know the <laughs> stock price is up, up, up and then it goes down. And, oh and look, like, they debuted their the biggest world <laughs> Die. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's uh, it's. <laughs> I mean, if, if this stock price, yeah, if this, if it, if it falls any lower, they might get to a point of, uh, of, uh, of uh, what is it? Uh, maybe it, maybe insolvency or 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 or, or as a, as a attractive for a buyout simply because of the the stock price. To, you know, depreciating in value it as it has. It's a very interesting story, uh, Wizard. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I was doing research for the show. I hadn't really done research into Six Flags for for quite a number of years. So to dive back into the story, it has been fascinating to uh, to to look at it for sure. Do you think Six Flags, even if they didn't sell the chain, but do you think Six Flags would be beneficial selling the park to another theme park operator? Just Magic Mountain, or selling some of them, one of them being a Magic Mountain. Hmm. Uh, you know, usually we don't necessarily see changing hands like that. Not all too often in our industry, which is very interesting. Usually it's kind of a package deal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. You know, I, it, it seems to me that, um, that Magic Mountain might be the crown jewel of their mm -hmm. theme park, uh, of their uh, theme park lineup, right? Ended. Right. So I, I don't know if necessarily it would happen. Now, I do believe that if you did find another theme park proprietor, um, maybe, you know, uh, uh, a, a, an ownership team that really does focus on quality, really does focus on reinvestment, that, yes, I think the potential is there and I think it could do very, very well. The the, the, the question is, uh, you know, who might that be? Who do you trust to do that? Obviously, Sleem made a lot of promises early on and didn't necessarily... Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, fulfill them. So that that's uh, that's a, that's a that's an open question there for sure. <sighs> I I don't know. I, I I do think though that to your point, uh, uh, I think Six Flags itself could be uh, um, better managed in more capable hands. That is for sure. There's no question in my mind here. Some of the decisions have been bizarre. Some of the things that he has placed an emphasis on, Salim has, uh, has been uh, just completely baffling. Um, there has been a, a priority towards things that maybe Disney or Universal are positioned to, you know, prioritize themselves, but not necessarily Six Flags. It's just not applicable. So it's, uh, it's just a... 
It's a weird move. Understand what you are, Six Flags. Understand who you're catering to. Understand what your product is and focus on that rather than looking at the big boys like uh, Disney and Universal and attempting to 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 uh, to to claim you know to, to claim their status while not offering the product that they that those parks offer. So that that right there would be my biggest um, uh, my biggest word of advice. And lastly, here, sure. So what I was, we were talking about David Zaslaw before, and as I put yes. it, let's do it. So yes. I proposed for so long. The Universal and Warner Brothers, they they're they're kind of. That they, they work together with Harry Potter. Okay. See, I don't know what the contract or how that works, but Zaslav should convince or cut the DC rights with Six Flags, make them strip all of the pro- DC from the property. It wouldn't be that hard because they don't theme them anyway, so they just have to change the name of everything and just take the DC logos off of everything. Sure. Give it to Universal sell it to them or give it to them however that works and please for the love of god a proper dc land like the one that was proposed for islands of adventure or something something similar yeah DC is so much better than a purple and green ride named joker and a red a yellow single rail coaster named wonder woman it does i feel so bad dc in the movies and the uh, theme parks is both is getting swashed by Marvel. <laughs> and, you know, I love Marvel. I really do. But I'd love to go on a proper... I don't want to have to fly to Abu Dhabi to Warner Brothers World to get on the Batman. I want to get on here. I mean, especially for Universal Hollywood. I mean, come on. Island Adventure, you have the Marvel Land. Hollywood, you have a DC Land. Wow. That would be so cool. I don't, you're very good into knowing contracts and licensing. What <laughs> has to happen for Zaphos? Can the team say, you know, Six Flags, sorry, we're cutting this deal immediately, effective 2023, and you have eight months to strip all your rise off. And Universal, come on. And let's, but does he even care? That's, a, that's another thing. I feel like there's so much, and these companies so big of like HBO Max and Discovery and all these things. That I feel like they don't even care about that, so I feel like it's not happening. But I wish they would care <laughs> because come on, then they would sell more merchandise. They can make a big like merchandising uh, thing, like you know, clause where you get like fifty percent of the stuff or some sales. I don't know something. They can make some additional money off that. Universal can build a proper land. Everyone would be happy. It would be like a win-win. Six Flags is nothing with it. Almost nothing. They sell okay merch, but nothing with it. And it just, it, it angers me because I'm like, wow, there could be a really cool DC land somewhere and Six Flags has the rights. <laughs> it it is uh, it's a fascinating thing. I've heard this before. Like you said, Islands of Adventure, right? I think it's the most prominent example where you had Universal Creative uh, people actually draw up ideas for a, uh, a a DC land that was going to be the land before Marvel was actually selected. They were going to have mm-hmm. a you know a, a, a Metropolis area, a Gotham area. It was they were going to have a Superman mm-hmm. ride and, cool. and a Batman cool. ride, right? Really cool stuff. Some of the some of the ideas were were outrageous. I would have loved to have seen them actually, uh, you know, brought to fruition. Absolutely for sure. But uh, really, it stems from the fact that, uh, well, I mean, Warner Brothers' uh, parent company at the time, Time Warner, uh, between the years of 1990 and 1993, um, uh, bought out Six Flags at one point, right? And uh, mm-hmm. that was their theme park. Uh, a division of their company for for a number of years until they actually sold it to Premier in 1998, and I think it's changed hands a, a couple times since then. They've gotten to some, you know, they they accrued some debt in that time. They they uh, they had some bankruptcy issues and so forth, and it's a very complicated history. I believe didn't Six Flags recently try to uh, they tried to you know expand in uh, Asia and that didn't work out very well at all. Yeah. They tried to they, expand had, in uh, Dubai as well. Oh yeah, and then Kadaya. I don't know what's going on with that, but a lot right. of they, national they may, stuff. They've had issues. They've had <laughs> issues without question, uh, uh, no question there. And you would have thought that those those very lucrative. Uh, 
um, what is it, uh, DC rights, you know, would have been maybe acquired by somebody else, you know, as they try to position themselves out of their debt, uh, Six Flags does. But they haven't. And I think the only thing to break that contract as it exists today, I don't know what the exclusive arrangement is when it comes to DC. Obviously, they have exclusive rights within uh, domestically. Uh, I don't know what the precise arrangement is but it sounds like to me just because they've had a stranglehold on these rights for so long and even passing up uh, universal's offer to actually take on those rights themselves and bring some of those uh you know uh, you know uh, park ideas to fruition it sounds to me that it's it's a pretty pretty locked in tight and the only way that universal can actually get their hands on those which i do agree with you i think that would be a a perfect uh uh what is it a compliment to their existing parks right they would they would have an ip that could really go toe-to-toe with marvel Mm -hmm. uh and and would be a perfect replacement for the uh marvel attractions in islands of adventure as they currently exist today all these things work out well but i think the thing is just gonna be money and and it's it's really unfortunate because there is real opportunity here. Like you said, I want to go on a Batman ride, a real Batman ride right yes. now here in the States. I want to yeah, do the same thing with some, uh, Superman and Wonder Woman and so forth. But uh, it's it's just, you know, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like theme park rights if, when it comes to Marvel in Florida, mm-hmm. right? There's so much potential. There's so many things they could do. And it's just money. And uh, now I do believe Universal um, is probably the one theme park proprietor with that uh, cash flow available in order to, to do a deal like that. Are they necessarily motivated to? I don't know. They seem to have uh, some great, uh, uh, what is it, some great IPs and uh, that they really believe in and they'll be implementing in, into Epic Universe here shortly. Uh, they're they're really I believe they think of, of themselves as poised to success as it exists today. So why necessarily shell out cash for an an IP that has been kind of on the fritz? Let's just say. Mm-hmm. Let's see if Zaslav actually takes it to a better place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which which by the way that okay maybe we should get into that a little bit because that Ezra Miller thing is that is something yeah. right yeah. there. But quickly before that, I just want to say sure. as I think I've said on either your. I don't know what since you guys have been on. I've been on yours so much, you've been on mine so much. I don't know anymore. Right. But Cars Land, right? No, no. Uh, people, the Cars movies are okay to a lot of people. People really like Cars Land because it's really thought out, put a lot of money into it. So, you, to your point about the, oh, why do they want to shell out money for you know a brand that's iffy? I, under the total business perspective, that is true. But if you do that and you just you just really put a good DC land. That has nothing to do with the DCEU. It just can again, and what Star Wars ga- Galaxy should have been, you know? Yes. The ones in there, it's just a good Star Wars land with everybody you can meet, everybody and do everything. Right. I feel like if you really make it good, then it'll definitely be worth the investment because no matter how the movies are doing, people are like, oh, that's okay, because I'm just going to be on this really cool Batman, right? At Universal Hollywood. That has nothing to do with this Batman or that Batman. It's just Batman in general, Superman in general. Boom, that has nothing to do with the TCEU, no timeline. Just a really good, thought out, $1 billion land that will stand the test of time no matter what phase they're in or what they're doing. I, oh, it'll be worth the investment. So if you're listening, CEOs, shout out the money. Do it, do it. I beg you, I beg my lifetime. I need to see it happen. Or else I will be screaming. It would be great. It would be great. Uh, I just think, you know, and and uh, interestingly enough, uh, WW Pro, a longtime insider, was on our channel recently and said that uh, Universal was looking at getting maybe the Lord of the Rings rights, which would be just uh, which would yeah, be just they huge wanted for to do an epic universe land for that. Right, that was the rumor. Um, right, right, right. That's a big franchise. I like it. It is, it is. So you have these other franchises that I think they they, they may see more potential in or maybe easier to get at least and mm-hmm. they're going to be focusing on that. It's a shame too because like you said, I, I would love to see these attractions. I would love to see these things come to life. But they're being, I don't know, maybe wasted on the, uh, the Six Flags side of the equation which, let's Ooh. be honest, does a roller coaster really necessarily need a theme like that? I don't think so. I think people understand these things for what they are and they can kind of enjoy them uh, how they are, right? Look, 
uh, there's some there's some real verticality there, right? I mean, does a roller coaster necessarily need a uh, a, 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 a what is it a, a theme, right? Like a DC theme? I don't think so, right? I think people understand them for what they are. Although, people... if it is good, like sure. like a proper like like if Universal did something with Superman, like the Velocicoaster or something, right? Like that would be cool. But yeah, if it's just a, what it is now. The, like a bear coaster. In addition to the station, they just annex the, you know, they reuse the station, annex something. Yes. And it's it blue and bat, like, eh, yeah, no, that doesn't either. Can, you can, that's what I'm saying. That's going to be so easy if they ever got lost rights to, it wouldn't be take six rights too much money at all to retheme them. You just take off the logo and call it something else. That's, so that's how badly themed <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, it's just, it's, it, we haven't really seen a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what is it, the, these brands leverage in the way that we kind of envision, right? Uh, I think the closest that they ever come is like what, a, like a, like a pseudo dark ride with a wild mm-hmm. mouse track in the dark. I mean, that's, that's as close as you've gotten uh, when it comes to uh, leveraging this DC brand here. And it has so much potential, like you said. It, it, it really is unfortunate. I, I would love to see Universal do that. I, I was actually hopeful, by the way. Uh, uh, eight, the Warner Brothers for instead of Discovery. Yes, that 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 Comcast was making a move for Warner Brothers. I thought, oh my god, this is perfect. You know, they can yes. add the DC library to their parks and stuff like that, and actually compete with the MCU, with the DCEU, with uh, you know competent leadership, uh, perhaps. Uh, and, and 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 I thought that duality would be perfect. Unfortunately, they lost the bid, and they did the uh, the 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 deal with um, uh, Discovery to to make that uh, that new entity with David Zaslav, and that maybe, is an interesting story there too. Maybe, maybe Zaslav will fail and the universal may have another chance in a couple of years who knows right who knows who knows uh, well he's <laughs> a lot of people say that he's well on his way to doing that right i mean i think a lot of people were upset about batgirl and look i think some of those i think some of those things are are, are warranted that being said look i mean Apparently, Zaslav looked at the picture, looked at you know some of the things that were going on, and wasn't happy with the product, and he uh, canceled it. Now, I understand some of those Incredible. might have been tax. Oh, go ahead. I was saying, incredible. Sure, yeah, there could be a tax version, but yeah. I've seen that other movies have tested the same reaction with uh, audiences, and those are stayed. But even more incredible is you got Mr. Flash over here as we're running around. Oh my gosh. Getting arrested left and right, punching people. And yet he's like, that's the one. That's the one that's, yep, that's the one. And apparently, I don't know if you saw, I saw, him, I saw him, I guess someone on Twitter, someone that was in the writers, someone was in the hmm. one of those rooms. Please. A couple of days ago. And they said um, it was Zaslaw first, Warner Brothers executives, all of them. Except Zazdaz wanted to show the movie, and there was a sh- like actual shouting match. He's like shouting match happening right now. <laughs> this this meeting, and they're shouting sure. match because Zazdaz didn't want to cancel it, and all of them did. I was like, wow, he must love this thing. <laughs> he does not want. Uh, yeah, like, that is bizarre. <laughs> Well, the the rumor uh, is uh, that Alan Horn, who has actually been, you know, he's back into the building apparently as a consultant, of course, but uh, apparently he was one of the guys saying, "Hey, you got to really cut ties with Ezra, Ezra right here. You really have to can this thing. I mean, this can't uh, be allowed to continue. There's going to be more stories, and this is going to make uh, the brand, you know, worse and worse. You know, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I have heard differing reports. Zaslav apparently wants this thing to show, and it's like, dude, guy, uh, understand what's going." on here he was running a damn cult out of an iceland airbnb <laughs> i mean come on there's 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 allegations of him actually you know uh engaging in uh, you know activity right with minors and so forth i mean this is getting really really bad i think Alan I mean, is exactly right you have to cut these losses here and you know separate yourself away from this person i mean he again he on video he choked somebody punched somebody i mean there's all those other definite allegations, but I mean, there's video evidence of these other things that I yes. mean, if someone else punched someone, I mean, you see Leslie Grace punching someone, no, but her movie got canceled, <laughs> you know, right. like it's weird. And also, because of the Flash, I guess, according to the insiders, was you know, Michael Keaton obviously comes in, and now supposed sure. to Batgirl supposed to come after the Flash because Michael Keaton's on the lot of the Batgirl, and so 
if it's like you're canceling some of the again, Marvel is all whether good or bad, or whether some movies some are bad. Also, one connected story, right? They don't just like chop. They don't just say, "All right, I'm gonna pluck this one off, and we're gonna skip the story over here." DC's right. like pluck movies, and now the story comes like this, and then how can you get excited about like a post credit scene or anything when you the next movie may not even may not even play, you know, or you get shelved for a reset? You know, what happened to his ten year? If you really want to do a, t- a reset and a ten year plan, they'd cancel mm-hmm. every single DC EU movie, including yeah. I'm, Looking forward to Aquaman, but he'd cancel Aquaman because there would be no point of seeing Aquaman if there's gonna be a new, like a whole new story, right? Because why'd, why'd you stay for the post credit scene? But like, ooh, you can't get excited about it because you know, in like three movies, it's gonna reset to nothing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I like, mean, Pete, like you said, you know, you have it, limited faith. Like audiences have limited faith going into this franchise. You know, uh, 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 going forward into the future and. <laughs> Look, listen, I mean, that to your point, that really does uh, hinder uh, 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 people's desire or people's, uh, you know, ne- the necessity to stay in, in you know, uh, um, what is it, to uh, uh, keep pace with these movies, right, as they come out, to, to, to really follow, track these movies, because they don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, you mm-hmm. could get uh, some cancellations, you, sh- you could not. From what I understand, Aquaman 2 is still going forward. Amber Heard's role, from what yeah, we have heard. Too, yeah, it's been, like, diminished slightly. Yes, but well, I, apparently she's been reshot. I guess there yeah. were there were court documents that she filed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously she's looking to, uh, <laughs> she's, she's looking to uh, appeal the Johnny Depp verdict. But apparently, in those documents, um, she, it was outlined uh, most explicitly that she's been completely recast. So apparently, that is going forward, which I think it is for the betterment of that film. But like you said, if if there is a ten year plan, right, where they are going to do a reset, why necessarily get invested? What's the incentive for people to get yeah. invested into these films? They're just not exactly no incentive, and then. I mean, you've already seen it before with post credit scenes that make no sense. Like in, um, was it Justice League? I think it was Justice League. Uh, yeah, it was Justice League where in the post credit scenes, Deathstroke came on the, the board, the ship, and I think he's talking to Lex Luthor. Like, ooh, I was like, ooh, Deathstroke's going to be first Batman. Of course, that never happened um, because it got canceled. Or, oh, yeah, because that's when Ben Affleck's movie, he decided he wanted to do it. So then the new Batman came. So, you know, as you can't get excited about these things if it's so disjointed. And there's then there's all these different characters. You have Michael Keaton's Batman and, you know, then the picture with Ben Affleck's Batman and Aquaman 2. And then you have Robert Patton's Batman. You have all these different mm-hmm. people. Like, there's so many. Who do you focus on? Who do you get as a who? And then with, if you're doing three stories at once, I mean, I just saw a thing as a Batman 2 hasn't even been greenlit yet and if it is it's years away so why did you why you know why did you get excited for the batman too because you know it's like 2026 or something i don't know it's just you know it's it's i mean i and I apparently uh i i heard just recently that joker 2 is going to be a musical with lady gaga i look yeah, I, I don't know it. what's going on i'm like why i, <laughs> the I don't know what's so going good. on with dc it, and it i'm seems trying to be to figure out. It's, it's another thing that's DCEU, and Joker and Batman are not DCEU. So then you're right. like, you're like, like how is someone that doesn't look at this stuff supposed? To, it's almost like Disney. How is someone supposed to know about or uh, that you needed a virtual queue for Rise of the Resistance? Right. You know, when you know you do if you're online, but if you're just traveling from. Nevada or whatever, and you're coming in, and you're just like, oh, I just want to go. Oh, look, there's a new Star Wars. Oh, I can't get on it because I need to go on a virtual queue at 7 a.m. I didn't know that. How is well someone supposed to know what this is and that is and that is and why this is happening with DC? You get so confused that you just give up, and then you just don't see any DC movies. Exactly. The reset comes too late, and you're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Another like, fourth Batman or fifth Batman because then Christian Bale. Christian Bale's kind of recent. I liked his Batman. So there's like five Batmans, all these Batmans running around. Like, okay, are we going to have another Batman in three years? Why am I doing, why do I have to watch the Orange Story again for the 10, 20, 20,000 time? Why am I like Joker so much? So why did I ruin it with a musical? Why is, and then Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn's, I thought Margot Robbie, someone's going to go and say, I thought Margot Robbie was Harley Quinn. Where's Margot Robbie? 
I don't know. I don't have time to scroll on Twitter and follow all the movie news because I have a life. You know, I don't, you know, like, so it's all this where Marvel just fills your face four, five, six. This is what's happening. And there you go. Right. Boom. Exactly. And it has been so discombobulated, uh, largely because you've had switching ownership, right? You had switching uh, management yeah. teams that have been in charge of these things, whereas you've had uh, uh, far more stability when it comes to the Marvel MC with Kevin mm-hmm. Feige and so forth. Hopefully that uh, continues. It sounds like it does. But on the DCEU side, you just can't say that. I mean, you know, you have different agendas. You have uh, people maybe putting different prioritize, uh, prioritizing different things when it comes to DCEU, wanting to go different places. And it's all happening uh, conceivably at the same time, which has caused some some real dismay for viewers. Uh, uh, it's it's it is really unfortunate. Hopefully they get their act together. I would start, by the way, by canceling the Flash. You cannot have that thing go out in theaters. And I think they are, a, you know, they are kind of coming to the realization here. There was a huge Business Insider article about uh, Ezra Miller uh, detailing pretty much everything about uh, what is transpiring with that actor, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and and it, very comprehensive. Apparently, it had 14 people who contributed uh, uh, to it in terms wow. of eyewitness testimony and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, just, just a huge spread. I would d- definitely encourage everybody to check that out if you're uh, interested in that uh, particular aspect. But it seemed to me, and I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know if everybody got this inclination, but it seemed to me that it was maybe published in part by Warner Brothers specifically, Warner Brothers Discovery, because I believe they're positioning themselves to 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 get some maybe press out there that executives could point to to confidently say, "Hey, we're canceling this because of this and this reason." Mm-hmm. I do believe there is a little bit of a campaign and behind mm-hmm. the scenes going on to get. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, the Flash actually canceled, and, mm-hmm. and so that maybe they don't have the necessarily the bad reaction that people did have to Batgirl. At this point, I don't think they have anything to worry about yeah, about them on that level. Yeah, I, I think like nobody is sticking around for Ezra Miller. Go ahead. Yeah, they wouldn't like. I feel like I'm not gonna cancel Batgirl like that. With it, I feel like man, all this preparation for the Flash. I feel like it'd be opposite. You'd be like, you prepare to cancel the Batgirl. For no sure. apparent reason, instead of yeah. the of Ezra Miller, I mean, come on, and then they he's in Fantastic Beasts, and that didn't do well, but he's in very little of it. But um, right, still, I don't. That, that's weird, really weird. But man, can you trust Warner Brothers with anything? Because I mean, like I just mentioned, Fantastic Beasts didn't do well, so mm-hmm. maybe as a studio, <laughs> Warner Brothers needs to really fix that. I mean, those are the two biggest fans. I mean, yeah. These things make a used to make a billion dollars a movie, like Harry absolutely. Potter. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's a whole Harry Potter land. People still to this day, and see this. That's a good example of the what we were talking about earlier with the Warner Brothers and DC and Universal. Sure. Fantastic Beasts. People don't really like that one, um, kind right. of. But man, the Harry Potter lands are so packed with their wands and their, uh, you know, wands and stuff because it's still a great land. So, oh, Universal right. once again can build a great DC land. No matter what they do, over, no matter what Warner Brothers is doing over there, as long as it's great, people still come in their capes and stuff because it's just good land. Warner Brothers should be shelved. Just kidding. It's a very cool studio. It has a lot of history. It, it does. Some direction, a clear direction that lasts more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. And look, I will say, I think their strategy regarding their content, I think is a good one. Uh, you know, I, I had heard that earnings call and I, I see how investors weren't maybe necessarily completely convinced by their strategy, but I do think it actually is sound. I do think they actually are kind of, uh, as uh, Bob Bearded JPEG would say, following the data, <laughs> right? I think they are uh, going in and doing this. energy machine. The yeah, activating the synergy machine, right? I do believe they're going to be uh, Warner Brothers is going to be able to do that effectively, right? But it's just like you said, content production is really king. It really is what drives the business, and they've had some struggles, uh, not under uh, uh, this new uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it? Management structure, uh, maybe necessarily, right? But we've seen like the Matrix, uh, you know, that kind of crashed and burned right there. Mm-hmm. That kind of a, uh, you know, that that whole thing. 
like you said, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them has just not materialized in the franchise that they thought it was going to. Uh, earned even more controversy outside of even J.K. Rowling herself with the Johnny Depp mm-hmm. whole thing. And now you have DCAU, which, by the way, is 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 just a, it's shri- it's uh, laden with controversy and misdirection. So, uh, you know, it's it's um, it's. It's really unfortunate to see it. it. It really is, and hopefully they can get their actors together mm-hmm. and uh, and and maybe uh, you know better leverage those brands more effectively, not only in the studio space but in the theme park space as well. Yeah. And it's funny because Warner Brothers, uh, they really have their problems with their people. This is not entirely they're not really their fault. Man, J.K. Rowling, Johnny Depp, the whole situation there, and. Uh, and what they do about it, because then Amber Heard was in one of their movies. Uh, and then, of course, Ezra Miller. So, man, <laughs> specific people are just already, it's already bad situation. As they're just making it even worse. Yeah. By doing their own personal problems, and which is then affecting their movies. Man, I would not want to be a Warner Brothers executive during that. And if I was just sweating, oh, like, oh, gosh, what did she do now? Oh, what did he do now? Oh, why are these people in our movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and apparently Zaslav has been on his own purging spree of those executives as well. So yeah, yeah. I would, uh, I, 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 it's, it's a very uh, uh, tumultuous time in that studio, let's say. But uh, let's see how it goes. Let's, 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 uh, you know, this is the, this is, I think uh, the first uh, couple complete quarters here where Zaslav is going to be in full control here over this new executive structure, this new kind of management structure that they have here, this new kind of entity. So we'll see how that all pans out. But uh, for, uh, you know, guys like Salim, I think that clock is ticking. <laughs> that clock is ticking. And and I don't know if it's going to come up anything but, uh, uh, but uh, cooked, let's say, for Salim. And we can only hope that the next people – would be even better than than Salim or if Zazov leaves Zazov. It's funny though. Everyone's like, Chapek, Chapek, Chapek. Oh, he's gonna, he's definitely out of there. He is out of there. And it's funny. He's uh, pretty darn good compared to these other two guys that we're talking about today. You know, that's true. The Disney people just are the people that don't follow it. Just don't really realize it. They're probably like. You know, it makes sense. Disney's their world. That's probably all they focus on. They're like, oh, JPEG, bad, bad, bad. But hey, at least we didn't have Salim in charge of the Walt Disney Company. He'd, he would have been out in the week. <laughs> oh, no, yes, absolutely. I mean, JPEG, uh, every single time that he was down, he had good quarters. He had good mm-hmm. quarterly earnings reports. Yeah, he, he had. Them. Yeah, he beat them. I mean, you know, he he delivered what investors actually want and what they most care about, and and that is good. I think an emphasis should be placed on, you know, uh, the, the 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 money and 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 uh, and the stock price and so forth to, to to an extent. You know, I don't think you go chasing figures necessarily, but uh, you know, it is a pro. It is a a company whose uh, whole intent is to generate profit, and it should be profit driven. And it's and it's uh, some of its decision making. Again, is. Is Chapek my preferred choice? No, he is not, admittedly. Uh, but at the same time, for right now, for 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 what is going on right now, uh, uh, both um, for Disney themselves, uh, you know, within the company, and uh, you know, kind of uh, looking outside of the company, right, with certain economic conditions and so forth, both with the pandy and and now with this maybe talks of a recession, I do think he is the best person for the job right. now. Now that might change in five seven years. Okay, that we might be looking at that equation differently. But for right now, he is the best person for the job in order to ensure the company's success long term. So that's kind of my thing. Now, lastly, because I know since you're on here and you're gonna share it on your social media, someone's gonna ask me. I bet you in the comments about the Magic Key program. So I sure. figured, why not ask you now? Renewals. Someone's gonna ask, when can I renew? When? Why yep. can't I renew? But you, you guys said next year, right? Because of the the lawsuit. So, do you yes, think, or next year something new might come. What right, you, right. They, they yeah, a uh, real little bit of reformat there for sure. Do you think that there, or what would you prefer? Would you prefer a reservations on? the lower keys within a dream key that's extremely high price with no reservations, almost like a yeah. reverse flex pass system, you know, like how sure. flex pass, which I think that 
held okay that would solve the lawsuit issue because they just mentioned the dream key which makes sense that's actually one of the first things i said i was like wait a second two hundred dollars and it says no blockout dates, but then you have to make a reservation. So it's a blockout date. You can't get your reservation. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I don't want to buy that right. one. Um, because I was like, and then when I the lawsuit came, like, this is a no brainer. That's exactly what I was talking about. So uh, I'm so glad someone finally pursued about it. Yes. Um, well, it was a class action. So if you feel yeah. aggrieved, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> if it gets class action status, you can go ahead and join the lawsuit. <laughs> you know, I, I will definitely join it if I uh, don't. <laughs> I, I, I have time, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but what do you think? What would your preferred system be? What do you think they're gonna do? How soon? Obviously, yes. there's unfavorable attendance, so maybe they don't really care to do anything soon. Uh, and hey, right. he's beating quarters. He doesn't even care to your magic key holders. I mean, in a hurry. I'm sure he. And I know. I know he sees all the complaints uh, daily, but. They're still not hurrying. Do you think something will happen in the next week? Do so you think they'll let all the passes expire? Like, kind of like it was when it opened up and the parks opened up in two weeks. Right. It does seem to me that there are they are letting people expire uh, for maybe a reformat of their system. Mm -hmm. um, look, at, you heard Christine Way since. A double you, reformat. Yeah. <laughs> And look, you've heard Christine. Yeah, well, I mean, look, and the reason why they might be looking to reformat again is because you'll uh, remember that originally they were going to debut a loyalty pass program at first. And and you know, I was very excited about that kind of. I'm, I know people are like, "Ooh, it's for Disney," and obviously, it's a company you want to make. You want to make some money, right? Sure. But you know what? I if I got I don't know a, a highest level pass. They can go what I don't know, twenty say twenty four times a year, right? Let's say, yeah. But one of the perks was fifty percent off family and friends tickets. I'm like, I'll take that. A lot of my people I want to bring, they want to come, but they're like, it's too expensive. And I'm like, if I can get you fifty percent off with my highest pass, I'll take it. I mean, I don't go to twenty four times a year anyway. So I mean, I know some people again, like with knots and six hours, may use it as their backyard, so to speak, and. I'm sure they can find something else to do for other times. They can't go. It's, this is not the only place to go everywhere, and we can go anywhere. So I'd say, you know, if they again, if they offered a dream pass or whatever, the highest of but you maxed it out 24 times, no reservations, but you just only got 24 times, which kind of creates its own reservation system because you don't want to go 20 every day because then, you know, in a month, you'd have to wait 11 months to go again. So I feel like sure. you, you do like a – loyalty thing like that like a sub went on the subway thing but you know you just max it out this pass or maybe you know, this pass this pass you know people maybe limited times per month I, look i, I yeah. think there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can you can do that and um like you said i i was very uh, at least curious about what the uh loyalty program would be but when they didn't institute that and they went to a more kind of uh the what is it flex plus bad system <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and they had i mean they gave people six days i mean that is quite a bit Again. at that level especially when you have about what is it a, i think it's like a 35 percent uh rate for uh you know kind of uh, uh the, mm -hmm. the the kind of uh, uh highest tier pass dream key pass right mm -hmm. it, I, I believe it's like about 35 percent mm -hmm. engagement with that product uh over the entire uh pass holder structure so that that was a lot and uh they obviously got into trouble right they've had mm -hmm. they have to rethink the system especially before the holiday season because they don't want to be caught in the same situation they were last year at this time that's 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 kind of the big problem right there so i can understand kind of the thinking and look as christine wastelands mccarthy actually brought up during the quarterly earnings call if demand abates at all right if they have a, an issue where demand does kind of uh slow down um with the domestic and international market they will use annual pass holders as backfill as uh, basically executives did back in 2008 with the introduction of the payment plan system so look you know it, it they, they they want them in their back pocket essentially so so how do you do that and, and and placate them and so forth look i think my preferred method of uh a a pass system is like you said implement 
maybe reservations or a kind of a flex pass system for the lower tiers and maybe have a dream key available, but at a much higher price tag, the mm-hmm. all you can eat model at $1,500 or so. I don't think that is applicable in, in 2020. Yeah. I don't think that's manageable. I think you do or have to if, I, maybe if you kept the $1,500, but for that option only it took away the monthly payment plan was it 80 or something dollars a month. Then even right. the- I feel like right. I feel like significantly fewer people would go down to lower passes, especially if you kept those monthly payment plans there. From the dream, yes, you have to do fifteen hundred dollars straight up or two thousand straight up, and that's right. It. You know, yeah. Exactly, hundred percent. And you, you know, you hit it right on the head there, right? A lot of what the a lot of the problems associated with the uh, pass structure as it exists today is really predicated on the the monthly payment program that they instituted back in 2008. And again, I'll reiterate this on this show, that was instituted at a time when a recession uh, was there. Sean, right? where are you at, Sean? Where are you Bob at, Iger Sean? <laughs> Bob Iger, right? Bob <laughs> Iger, uh, and, you know, and look, he, he, you know, he was, he was facing it a little bit right there. They were, they were investing massively in Disney Company Venture. They needed some cash flow. They needed some uh, attendant space in which to pull from. They did it from the annual, annual pass holders, which is great. But they've kept that those same recession era tactics in place, even though demand has only increased from there year over year over year. You do not need a payment plan when uh, demand is simply uh, not your issue. <laughs> they have the issue of too much demand. Exactly. Uh, so I do believe just that alone would mitigate so many of their issues that they're experiencing mm-hmm. with their with their uh, 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 annual pass holder programs because it's just, let's be honest here, it's just too accessible. So I do agree with you that that is, that is number one. Uh, out, of all, mm-hmm. out of anything I say, that is absolutely number one. But if they're not going to do that... And, I, I don't think they, they are, then you have to look at other ways, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the ways I think they could is like with a points-based system, right? Why is every single day uh, the same value as any other day? It, obviously, people are going to eat up all the Saturdays immediately and then yeah, you know, exactly. go from there. Whereas if you had a points-based system, maybe you rethink about those Saturdays, right? Maybe mm-hmm. you think, oh, you know, maybe I should go ahead and spread my points out accordingly. Um Again, that's another that's another tactic. You have to eliminate squatters. Squatters are the the the, the probably the worst aspect of the reservation system because that hurts access for everybody. Got to get rid of those. What was that? Babysitting. Yeah, exactly. Babysitting, right? I mean, you know, some people have more time than money. Some people have more money than time. <laughs> and people will spend the time that they have, if they don't have money, on, uh, you know, gaming the system, as it were. And that mm-hmm. has to be eliminated entirely. Um, so it, it's a very interesting, complex question. But look, I would start with getting rid of the payment plans, uh, you know, overall, and see what happens out of there, and then uh, further refine it as you go along. Now, what would you think, because you mentioned squatters and squatting on date, and something I would say I sure. have done only because they're all gone, so I'm like, I got to get mine before it's done. Right. So what if... That is a that is a compounding problem, like you exactly. said. Exactly. So what if, maybe for day tickets, you can... What's the reservation? You can do like four months in advance or three months in advance? Or- I think it's... Want to say anywhere between 90 to 120 days, like, yes. So let's say you kept that for day tickets, right? Tourists come in, they're people are planning or whatever day kids. But for reservations, yes. yeah, let's say you can only book one to two weeks in advance or for a password, sorry, because the thought is because Disney has a lot of data on everybody, they know where everyone's zip codes are. Most passers aren't planning to come, they're flying, not flying on a plane or something, they're sure. probably an hour away, like me. One to two weeks would I feel like you only could book one to two weeks in advance like that. I feel like it would really. Um, you know, cut out that the squatting, the babysitting of them days, and you know, then you can just oh, I guess you can still offer, and then also don't offer six, like offer like five, four, like reservations per time. But I feel like if you two weeks is enough for pass holders, but then I guess could that be another lawsuit where like wow, well the pass with the key, the day tickets get to three months, but we can only two months. I don't know. I feel like that it, it, it's complicated because you think about it. 
if you limit it to two weeks, right, and especially if you have six days in order to spend, you're not giving people necessarily the, the, the time required to spread that reservation, those reservations out. Now, if you severely limit how many see, reservations you can make why, with that. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe instead of the, the six reservations, it would be like two weeks. But for the whole year, you have a certain amount of times to visit. Sure. 24, 25, 26, I don't know. And that's it. If you use all 26 in two weeks or two months, and you're good. You're done. That's interesting. No, that's interesting. But, yeah, that you could you could you could deal with that condensed uh, yeah. uh, time period uh, 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 maybe more effectively yeah. if you had that and limited amount of days. And you yeah. wouldn't have again. You have no reservations because the people you these would never would pass to if you have a thirty max per year, right? So so no one would go every single weekend because then otherwise they'd have twenty two weekends not to go. You know, you know. Oh, I, sure. I, you, if you max it out number no reservations but you just give people a number i feel like people might like that i feel like they might like it it is an interesting (laughs) idea it it really is um very interesting i think it could work it is it is now i have heard look uh, listen I, i think all options are on the table Honestly, I, I think uh, I think they're looking to uh, to to what is it to uh, uh, reformat this uh, annual pass holder system in any way they can, and I do believe options like that are on the table. I mean, we heard from uh, what is it? There was there was a there was a, a, a litany of different um, uh, what is it uh, uh, surveys that were put out right before mm-hmm. the debut of a magic cast, magic key system mm-hmm. that imp- that implemented a lot of those things as part of the survey and got feedback and so forth on that that uh, that that you know alluded to them doing these kind of things or at least having these ideas in the building and I do believe those are back on the table. As far as right now, though, I mean, they're limited because, uh, you know, any major changes to the annual pass of the program, uh, I could open them up to legal exposure. And that kind of gets uh, very complicated when you're having to deal with that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, look, I, I think it's going to be, and I've listed the options before, but, you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be probably a combination of, uh, of a price increase, right? Uh, maybe a, a complete reformat of the system at some Ooh. point, uh, maybe making only lower tiers available right now and and, uh, and so forth. So it's 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 going to be fascinating to see what they do. I know in January they're thinking about maybe taking off the reservation system for ticket holders specifically. Uh, maybe Ooh. they're going to limit it to maybe weekends. Uh, I'm sorry, weekdays, I should say. Maybe they'll limit it to maybe certain parks. But I know that they want to maybe pull back on that a little bit uh, for a variety of factors. Um, but uh, but maybe then we hear something about all of this. But I don't know. You know, with how this thing, with how these things are going, are, are going. Uh, if they premiere the uh, 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 the annual pass renewals before mm-hmm. August twenty fifth, right? It'll likely only be for the lower pa- lower tier passes. They they mm-hmm. will not accept. You know they they they, they won't risk. Uh, 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 you know offering 365 days a year, right? They're not oh, going to yeah. do that. I, I wouldn't be uh, now with the current lawsuit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And if they don't do that, well, then January 1st. I mean, that's it. You know they they'll mm-hmm. debut something there. It's a fascinating time, Wizard. It's a fascinating time in the theme park world. That's for sure. Really is wow, a lot, a lot to look forward on. You'll you'll have to come back on, and we have to do some updates whenever you want. Because I love having you on. You're great. This has been such a fun conversation. Like wow, look, already two hours have gone by, and it didn't even feel like two hours. Like that's the insane. intention, man. That's the intention. That's the intention. Like incredible. Um, so. Vash guy, freshly squeezed. Where can everyone find you? I think I forgot to ask you at the beginning, but now they can know oh, now where can they can find you. It is absolutely fine, sir. They, they, I've, I, you know, anybody looking uh, uh, for for my content, I'm sure they know <laughs> uh, where they find me. Anyway, but hey, if you guys haven't been informed yet, if if I'm uh, completely new to you on here, you can go ahead and follow me right down there at Vash Sky. Go ahead and put that in the twitters there. I should pop up. Give me a follow. Love the DMs. Love the 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 chats. Uh, all for all the uh, as Christine Waysons McCarthy would say for all a robust discussion. Right? <laughs> if you want to see me. 
<laughs> hey, you know, hey, that's what she says. She says robust all the time. <laughs> if if you want to see me, well, it's going to be on uh, Orange Grove 55 at Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info squeezed fresh right from the Grove. Oh, I'll do that. And with the lovely little, 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 little sound. I love it. Is that, is that Star Tours? That is Star Tours. It is Star Tours. Yes, it I is. Because I, I imagine that little the robot. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let us know what you guys thought about all these topics from Six Flags to Magic Keys to Zazlop and how it kind of all semi intertwines and relates. It is. It's not, it's not too like far off the spectrum. They all kind of combine kind of like one big though with those pie charts, those charts with the, the, the two circles that the overlap those charts. That's what this is like. Let us know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Also, what would your magic key program be? I kind of have a guess, but make it realistic. Don't say yes, please. Whatever was, what was the one that with the signature plus pass like before, no reservation. No. Realistic. <laughs> Not what you want, but what you think. <laughs> Let me yes. know in the comments below. Subscribe. Subscribe to Orange Girl 55, which reached 4,000 subscribers. Very nice. And have Very a good. fantastic day.